Hello friends, Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, and subscribing to the Joe Boo Sports Report. Um, without you guys, this literally does not work. Let's get open for business. Um, I come today with a heavy heart. You guys know my man, Cowboy Crunk. He was part of the draft trip, The one of the things that when I'm done away from being here, the last things that I, I know I'm going to remember is the great time that we had um, at the draft, you know, hanging out with Walt and Alex and, you know, seeing Miss Jackie and Sarah, meeting so many of you great fans and spending time together was unbelievable. And that's what football is. Football is truly family. And um, we have recently lost uh, a member of the family. You guys remember Cowboys Crunk. He's got a YouTube channel. Check him out and things. Um, he came with one RV and he brought his friend Kenny. Um, Kenny, you know, you, he's a Texans fan, so don't hold it against him. But Kenny was cooking up some stuff and boy, he could burn up some food. Unfortunately, Kenny was in an accident and uh, died um, today. And so, Cowboys Crunk is definitely um, broken up about it. And he had sent me a message and let me know. So, thoughts and prayers for Cowboys Crunk, as well as for Kenny and his family. Um, it's tragic, to be honest with you, because Kenny, young, healthy man, great guy fun to be with and everything else and it's moments like this that you start to think about your own mortality see when you're young when you're like michael and all that you got no fear you'll go do crazy stuff because you don't think about how much time you have left you know i turned 53 in less than two weeks and you start realizing that you've lived the bulk of your life. You don't know how many more days you have left because I definitely have less in front of me than I do behind me. And that's why you have to appreciate each and every day. Now, when it comes to our Dallas Cowboys, I am so sick and tired of all the negativity. So I tell you what you guys do. All of you bandwagon fans that are out there that are literally saying the Cowboys, we're going to be 4 and 12. We suck. We stink. They're losers. I'm done with them. That's fine. Please. I don't know how much time I got left. So don't be wasting mine. If you feel like the team is done, the season is over, bye bye. Go elsewhere with all the negativity. Because I am here to enjoy my time that I have left with my Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to take one week at a time, and I'm going to enjoy watching that game. And I'm not going to waste my energy on all of you people that literally will be, as soon as they start winning, and they will, will be back talking about how great everything is. Stop wasting your time. Life is too precious. You don't believe in them? Go. By all means. I don't need you. But I'm going to be here. I'm going to be behind my team, and I'm going to be trying to figure out how they can get their shit together with the rest of my Cowboys family. So don't waste my time. Life is too short. This one's for you, Kenny. Um, I know I only knew you for three days, man, but I know you were definitely good people. Cowboys Crunk, I know you're you're broken up about it, man. My thoughts and prayers go with you, your wife, your family, and your friends, and with Kenny. Whew. All right. Now that we got that talked about, Let's get on to the Dallas Cowboys. 
For all of you that think the season is over, understand a season is not a sprint. It's a marathon. There's going to be highs and lows. There's going to be times when your team just can't do jack crap. I remember the Baltimore Ravens winning a Super Bowl when their offense was even worse than ours was for a while. They started two or three different quarterbacks, I think including Tony Banks. Yet that team went on to win the Super Bowl. Football is a crazy sport. It, there's no rhyme or reason to it. You can be the team that's got everything together that everybody believes is the favorite to go all the way that goes out and invests a boatload of money on a quarterback to say that that's the only missing piece yet to fall and lose to Buffalo, who everybody said was the worst team in football. That's the crazy thing about it. That a team like Tampa Bay can lose their starting quarterback because he's an idiot and have a journeyman quarterback come in and do something nobody's ever done before and throw 400 yards three games in a row. That's football. Expect the unexpected. You're going to have lulls. You're going to have bad points. You're going to have times where it's gut-wrenching. And if you can't take that, then you shouldn't be a football fan. Now, I'm going to go on record right now and say, this season's not over. It's not done. All you people that are tell, coming to me, 5 and 11, you're wrong. This team will rise. All you have to do is win enough games to be there for the playoffs. That's all that matters. We've lost two. As long as we don't lose more than four more, I guarantee you we're in the playoffs. And right now, as putrid as we've been, we could be 0-3. But we were 1-2. and And we have some opportunities. I dare say, from what I hear from Dak Prescott, expect more from our offense, some changes, some different stuff. I don't think, even though the persona is, we don't have major changes. We're not doing things. The last thing you do in football is let people know. You're going to come out and say, oh, yeah, we're going to do blah, 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 blah. So the other team can say, oh, they're going to do blah, 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 and know how to fight it. You play poker face. I can't honestly think that the Dallas Cowboys, Jerry Jones, Jason Garrett, and all those guys are behind closed doors thinking that everything's okay. That they're not trying to work their ass off to do something different. Because I think for the first time that Jason Garrett's job is finally on the line. I know a lot of you guys say that I just believe in Dak Prescott and it's all Dak's fault. You know what? It is everybody. Everybody has to improve. If everybody improves 10%, you'll be blowing people out of the water. Here's a little clip. Maybe it's a little clip. From Joe Buck. Joe Buck seems to think it's a little bit different. Oops. Okay, we're trying to get Joe Buck.
Okay, I clearly let that run a little bit too long here, but Joe Buck does make some valid points about where this offense stands. And it's funny because I was talking to Manny from Chicago and PJ and Dallas and stuff, and they're trying to figure out what is going on. One, that Zeke Elliott doesn't get the carries, and two, what is the deal with this offense that we keep just kind of platooning different wide receivers and things like that? And they've got an interesting theory that it's because they want to lowball Dak Prescott. They're making things difficult. So that way he can't have a great season and then they'll be able to re-sign him at a lower rate. Don't ask. I'm just putting it out there. But when you think about what they did do, and, and maybe, just maybe, we need to look differently about what Des Bryant said. Maybe Okoye was right. It's not Des's fault. And maybe it really is Scott Linehan. We'll talk about Des at another time. But you can't look, when you start watching the game film and you look at the receivers, and I know everybody says you got to throw the receivers open. Yeah, but yeah, th that works to a point. But when you have a guy that's literally draped on him and you know you're throwing the double coverage, your chances are not really, really good. Let's be honest here, okay? The receivers are not doing that great. You got Cole Beasley and Michael Gallup are really about your two right now wide receivers that you say are legitimate NFL wide receivers thus far. That's not to say that the other guys won't be, or Austin is kind of that hybrid. But you're not exactly working with the cream of the crop there. Tight end. Oh, my God. Tight end has been so disappointing, it's not even funny. So... With that being said, it's always darkest before the dawn. And I think you're going to see a different team come out against the Lions. And as we look ahead, there's nobody going to run away at this division. The Eagles, check this out. They got the Titans this weekend, but then they have the Vikings, who right now might be playing for their lives, which will have... Um, four days extra rest because they're playing tonight. Then they play the Giants, which is always tough in the division. And in fact, the Giants' two best games last year were against the Eagles. Then they play the Panthers, the Jaguars, and then they play us. And as much as you want to talk about how bad we are, one thing we always do well is we play well in our division. Yes, we've had the best record in our division over the last five years. Not even close. Then you look at the Giants. Yeah, they got the win against the Texans, which are 0-3 um, this weekend. But they have the Saints, the Panthers, the Eagles, the Falcons, and then the Redskins. How many games of those do you think the Giants are going to win? And then the Redskins coming off the bye have the Saints, the Panthers, us, Giants, and Falcons. So, and of course, we have the Lions this weekend, the Texans, the Jags, the Redskins, Titans, and Eagles. So, we still have plenty of room to grow, to get better, and games that can be a slugfest that maybe our defense has to win. But this season, my friends, is far from over with. And like I said, if you believe it is, please, go, go, go watch basketball. Okay, They, they started working out yesterday. Go, just go, go someplace else, okay? Because I'm going to be here for my Dallas Cowboy family. I'm Mark Holmes with Cowboy Joe Boo, and we'll be watching the game tonight to see what the Vikings and Rams have got. I'll see you soon.